What's going on guys? We're on track seven, queen two. This is the Fairy Feller's Master Stroke. And uh, this one isn't that long. It says, uh, Mercury was inspired by Richard Dad's painting, The Fairy Feller's Master Stroke at the Tate Gallery in London. The fantasy-based lyrics make direct reference to characters and vignettes detailed in the painting and in Dad's companion poem, Elimination of a Picture and its Subject, called The Feller's Master Stroke. Characters include Queen Mab, Wagoneer Will, and the Tatter Dermalion, and others. Use of the word quer, query in the twice repeated line, what a query fellow has no reference to Mercury's sexuality, according to Roger Taylor. Quare? Okay. Whatever. In some, it's not, it's Q U A E R E. In some markets, the album included a fold out cover with a reproduction of the painting. Oh, really? Wow. I wonder how much that goes for. <laughs> Author Neil Gaiman wrote about the painting and the album on his blog. Reason tells me that I would have first encountered the painting itself, the enigmatically titled Fairy Feller's Master Stroke, reproduced pretty much full size in the fold out cover of a Queen album at the age of 14 or thereabouts, and it made no impression upon me at all. That's one of the odd things about it. You have to see it in the flesh, paint on canvas, the real thing, which hangs mostly when it isn't traveling in the pre-Raphaelite room of the Tate Gallery, out of place among the grand gold-framed pre-Raphaelite beauties, all of them so much more huge and artful than the humble fairy court walking through the daisies for it to become real. Okay. And when you see it, several things will become apparent, some immediately, some eventually. Gaming wrote a longer essay about the painting for Intelligent Life. For the intricately arranged studio recording, Mercury played harpsichord as well as piano, and Roy Thomas Baker played the castanets. Taylor called this song Queen's biggest stereo experiment, referring to the use of panning in the mix. Yeah, that, I mean, really, they are messing around a lot. Like, again, things are coming in and out. They're messing with volumes of things. I mean, I feel like they were doing that on Queen 1 also a, a bit, really. So they've just always been doing that. I mean, that's cool. That's, you know, like it's 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 a different medium, you know, and like art form in that kind of way recording, right? Especially back then. Especially back then. Because it's so much is still kind of new and new technologies are just rolling out, right? Song was performed only a few times during the Queen 2 tour, and there was thought to be no live recording of the song until 2014 when it was released on Live at the Rainbow in 1974. That's wild. Wow. Just all of a sudden, oh yeah, we got this right here. Wow. Crazy. Okay. All right, let's get to it. The Fairy Feller's Master Stroke. Bam. Harpsichord. Okay.
Query. background vocals oh and it goes into this uh nevermore of course everybody wants me to do everything all in one take i'm not going to <laughs> i mean i'm listening to it all at once for the most part but you guys unfortunately it's uh it's broken up by the day so yeah uh it gives me time to record more you know and, and do my thing basically i like this i thought this was pretty cool actually uh, all those vocals, the background vocals, they, and they do this a lot. It's like, it kind of like, it like creates this like swelling effect kind of where it's like just dynamically, dynamically like a swelling effect where it's like small and then it like breaks open almost, almost like a firework, right? There's a lot of that. I mean, that's actually kind of a good, good uh, explanation of Queen to me is like fireworks. It's like a firework show. <laughs> You know, just like all these, all these colors and things and, and it gets big and it can die down and you know, there's all of that really. Yeah. Yeah. They're really very good. And just interesting to hear how early on they're, how early on they were always them. It's just developing and kind of experimenting, messing around in the studio, doing different things and all the multi-layering that's you know the overdubs right that's like huge and they're doing that early on very cool again reasons why i started at the beginning just to hear that because it's like did they do an album like did they ever do an album that was kind of like rush's first album for example like a like a first album that was like that and it's kind of like no they didn't start there <laughs> didn't really start there. I mean, maybe they started on their version of that, but mm, not really, not really. I would say their first album was better for sure because it had more good songs on it, to me at least, on first listen. To me at least on first listen. Rush's first album on first listen was freaking terrible aside from Working Man, which is excellent. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it was like, I couldn't wait for it to be over and then I go to the last song and that for and I was still like awake and alive at that point incredibly and that thing just was like holy god this is one of their best songs still crazy right anyways I like this one this is a uh, this is cool very interesting keeps you around there's a lot going on there's uh, yeah okay all the panning right there's stuff that's hard right and hard left okay and again the things that are just popping in and out Sounds interesting. And so much packed into two and a half minutes, right? So much stuff packed into two and a half minutes. Cool. All right. This little short piece, Nevermore, is up next. I'll catch you then.